Amen. The sun rose today once more, the joyous Easter to all of you, all across our beautiful land, all across the beautiful land, all around the world. In Arizona, Monument Valley, the sun rose today as it did in Alaska, as it did in Delaware, in Georgia, from Kansas to Kentucky. In the lighthouses of Maine to the glorious arid landscapes of Nevada. And right back here at the GWB, it is Easter. Here, there, and everywhere. What a year. What a year it has been. Still, can it be that still, still we are broadcasting Easter Sunday on Zoom? Last year, innocently enough, at least in mid-March, some folks were saying that we'd be back for Easter, and now we know for sure that we didn't know which one. It's been a year, a year that has been marked by the depths of sadness, the deepest and hardest of all sadness. This Easter, we remember the families of more than half a million people who grieve. The depths of the sadness that envelop our nation are unfathomable. We looked over the last year for signs of life and hope and inspiration in each other and in the world. Humans improvise and adapt. We can be incredibly good at that. If the pandemic brought out some of the worst in people, and it unquestionably did, it also brought out some of the best. It's simple, but it's true. For most of us humans, it does no good when we can't see a face or for someone to just tell us their name. A faceless Derek doesn't mean a lot. Almost every story you read, every book you read, the author may say something about a person's stature, but then use phrases or sentences, describe eyes and jawline and teeth and ears and hair and cheeks. Nurses figured out quickly last year. Doctors figured it out quickly last year. But we needed to see faces. People rushed in to restore the humanity in the midst of PPE and ventilators. We tend to figure out some kind of way that we're going to have to have to come up with opportunities to touch each other and see each other. That we have to find ways to hug one another. We have to find ways to embrace some kind of way. I hope over the last year that you have found hope and joy all over the place and in surprising places. You'll have your own sources and methods, of course. My example, my most recent example of the absurdity and beauty of being alive in 2021 is Gurdeep Pender. Who is Gurdeep? He's a Punjabi Sikh who moved to Canada years ago and settled near Whitehorse in the Yukon, where he tends to stand out a little bit. And during COVID, he decided that he would get himself a Twitter account and start recording himself dancing Bhangra, folk dances from the Punjab using the mountains of the Yukon and frozen lakes of the Yukon as a background. Why does this bring me such joy? I'm really not sure, but I know that I want to share it with you.
Why does that bring me such joy? I don't know, but it does. It's a bit of a mystery. Um, and I, I, I just happened to notice uh, that I hope Dave is going to do the dance next from Caleb. No, you don't. Um, and I won't. Sorry to disappoint or, or perhaps uh, help you along by not uh, dancing like Gurdip. People can be amazing. People can be amazing. We have learned and relearned that over the last year. Thanks be to God. But still, as we've learned this week especially, alongside of the amazement comes great challenge. Alongside of Easter Sunday comes Good Friday. One does not replace the other. There are still so many crosses, so many crucifixions and so many crosses and so many Good Fridays in the world. Even on Easter Sunday, we can't pretend that they don't exist. Easter doesn't make us just happy in a sugary kind of way to help us get over things. Joy sits right alongside sadness. Hope sits alongside of grief. We heard on Friday when Jesus saw his mother, according to the Gospel of John, and the disciple whom he loved standing near. While he was on the cross, he called out to his mother. While he was suffering the agony of death, he said to Mary, woman, behold your son. Later, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. When Jesus called out from the cross to Mary, he did not lie when he said, it is finished. Easter doesn't come along and just replace, it is finished. We can't minimize Mary's grief or the reality of the pain that Jesus felt or the despair of the disciples. This was a controversy in the early church about whether Jesus really felt the pain and really suffered the agony of the cross. Of course he did. Imagine Mary's anguish. Empathize with her. The stunning beauty and perhaps even part of the surprise of the Christian story is that there's such an extraordinary depth of emotion that captures all manner of feelings and realities. Perhaps none more profoundly than the deep bond between mother and child. Woman, behold your son, Jesus calls from the cross as he's dying. Behold your son, he calls out to his mother, to his mommy, to his mama. We must not forget that the cross, the very cross whose meaning we have enabled to be reimagined, it's not merely a tool of execution, it was a horrific one at that, but it was also an expression of state-sponsored terrorism, a deterrent to any people on the edges of the empire, a reminder that this is what happens when you seek self-determination or independence or self-expression. This is what happens when you make claims that run counter to the status quo of domination and imperialism. Crosses were placed typically on the outskirts of a town or a city near the primary entry points so that people would see them to keep people in line. There were many ways to die on a cross, but the most common one, the most common one, horrible as it is to recognize, was asphyxiation. One of the many painful reminders of this week is that George Floyd, too, was brutalized, scapegoated, crucified asphyxiated in an act of intimidation and terror. That big man with his deep, raspy voice, he too called for his mother from his cross. He said, Mama, I can't breathe. Upon a modern cross, like Jesus, he too was surrounded by people who were just onlookers. They didn't want to be, but they could not intervene. 
on account of the authorities. George Floyd, he too called for his mother. Woman, behold your son. Good Friday was not just one day 2,000 years ago. There are so many crosses and so many crucifixions and so many Good Fridays. We remember people and peoples in America who have been put on a cross. Our history of brutalizing and crucifying the innocent, our history and practice of scapegoating and crucifying George Floyd, and also Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor and Tamir Rice, our history and practice of scapegoating and crucifying migrants who experience ecological and economic devastation. So we have built systems that allow enough people in to keep the orange juice cheap, but making it so hard that thousands have died in the desert of thirst. We remember our history and practice of scapegoating and crucifying Asians and Asian Americans, Native Americans, and so many more. We remember all people and peoples who've been put on a cross, who have called to their mom from the cross, as George Floyd did. So often we have turned Easter into a personal matter. Jesus died for my sins, so I am forgiven. I am actually quite confident, although it seems risky to be supremely confident about this, I'm actually pretty confident that Jesus would have been thoroughly confused. That's why I'm dying? Not because he was a prophet or teacher or seer or miracle worker and healer whose kingdom of love and ethics of nonviolent subversion and transformation were deemed to be threatening to the status quo and power brokers of his day. We might realize that rather than thinking only of ourselves, Christians are the very people who are supposed to look to the cross, that image that we place in almost all of our churches or on top of our churches and see Jesus and George Floyd being scapegoated and crucified, Jesus and Tamir Rice, Jesus and Breonna Taylor, Jesus and every Native American brutalized for their heritage, Jesus and Asian Americans who are scapegoated and threatened and brutalized and targeted, Jesus and every migrant who died in a Texas field or the Sonoran Desert or who drowned in the Rio Grande, scapegoated and crucified. It was Christians, it is Christians, who are supposed to look to the cross of Good Friday and see Jesus and everyone else who's been sent to a cross. Christians are the people who are supposed to look to the cross and be reminded again and again that we are the ones called to say, enough, enough Good Fridays. Because if we can do this to Jesus, who else are we doing it to? We cannot go on like this. And from where should we get the courage to say enough? From where should we get the hope to say enough? From where should we believe enough in love to say enough? You'd be a little crazy using human logic that given all that's happened, how many people and how many peoples have been crucified, how many crosses have been whittled, and shaped and fixed together because they were not just for one man. After all we've been through over the last year as a country and as a world, you'd be a little crazy to say, well, we can just go on from here. But we would dare in the face of all the crosses to still say enough again and again, still believe enough in the power of hope and in the power of love. How can you say enough to all the crosses? How do you do that? And along comes the Christian story. The tomb is empty. God rolled away that stone. What we thought might happen in Mark, if we were reading it for the very first time, two people come to pay their respects in the midst of their grief is not what happened. Instead, the text simply reports that as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He's been raised. He's not here. Which is, which is crazy. It's such a bizarre and beautiful story. It's crazy. You may feel somewhat removed from that story. It may feel 
surreal to you. But in case it doesn't, there is a daily reminder. All of 364 other days of the year. from Arizona to Alaska, Delaware to Georgia. From Kansas to Kentucky, Maine, to Nevada, right back here at the George Washington Bridge, and the Statue of Liberty, down the shore, out at the gap, across the river, and right back here in Montclair. The story of Easter is that, yes, Good Friday happens all the time. And it is not the only word or the last word because the sun rose again. A joyous and blessed Easter to you. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good for the sun rose again this morning. The stone is rolled away. The cross is not the last word. Hope and love are here.